The clock on the wall ticked steadily, a constant reminder of how late it was getting. I sat alone in the classroom, the last rays of the setting sun casting long shadows across the desks. My history project was spread out in front of me, papers and books scattered as I tried to piece together my research. The school was eerily quiet, the kind of silence that makes your skin prickle and every small sound seem amplified. The project was due the next day, and I was determined to finish it, even if it meant staying late. Everyone else had gone home hours ago, leaving the school empty and hollow. My eyes were starting to blur from staring at the text, and I rubbed them, trying to refocus. Suddenly, a loud crash shattered the stillness, making me jump in my seat. It sounded like a book had fallen off a shelf in the library. The noise echoed through the empty corridors, amplifying its intensity. My heart pounded in my chest as I sat frozen, listening intently for any other sounds. The library was just down the hall from my classroom. I craned my neck, peering into the dimly lit hallway, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. The fluorescent lights flickered slightly, casting eerie shadows on the walls. I told myself it was probably just a book that had been precariously balanced and finally fell. But the unexpectedness of the noise had set my nerves on edge. The echo of the crash seemed to linger, bouncing off the empty walls of the school. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart. The silence that followed was almost oppressive, making me hyper aware of every little sound. The hum of the lights, the ticking of the clock, even my own breathing. I considered going to check the library, but the thought of walking down the dark, empty hallways was unsettling. Instead, I decided to focus on finishing my project as quickly as possible so I could leave. I bent over my papers, but the sense of unease lingered, making it hard to concentrate. Every creak and groan of the old building seemed amplified, each one making me jump slightly. I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone, even though I knew that was impossible. It was just me, a stack of history books, and the oppressive silence of the empty school. As I worked, my mind kept wandering back to the crash. What could have caused it? Maybe it was a loose shelf or a gust of wind. Or perhaps, my mind whispered, it was something else entirely. Stories of the school being haunted by a former student or a janitor who never left after hours crept into my thoughts. I scoffed at the idea. Ghosts weren't real, right? But the unease persisted, gnawing at me like a persistent itch. Time dragged on, each minute feeling longer than the last. The shadows in the room seemed to deepen, stretching across the floor like fingers reaching out. I forced myself to stay focused on my project, flipping through pages and jotting down notes, trying to drown out the thoughts of what could be lurking in the darkness beyond the classroom door. Another noise, this time a faint scratching sound, made me freeze mid-sentence. I whipped my head around, scanning the room for the source. Was it just the wind outside, or was there something moving in the shadows? My pulse quickened, adrenaline flooding my veins. I wanted to pack up and leave, but the project still needed more work. Stealing my nerves, I forced myself to continue, though each minute felt like an eternity. The school seemed to come alive with unseen whispers and faint echoes, as if the very walls held secrets they were unwilling to share. I pushed through my exhaustion, determined to finish and escape the oppressive atmosphere that seemed to grow heavier with each passing moment. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I completed the last paragraph of my project. I gathered my papers into a neat stack, glancing nervously around the room. The once familiar classroom now felt alien and foreboding in the dim light. With my heart still pounding, I packed my bag quickly and stood up, ready to leave. As I walked towards the door, the hairs on the back of my neck prickled. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every shadow seemed to hide a lurking presence. Every corner held a potential threat. I quickened my pace, the hallway stretching out endlessly before me. The flickering lights cast eerie shadows that danced along the walls, playing tricks on my tired mind. Just as I reached the exit, a cold draft swept through the corridor, extinguishing the last rays of sunlight that had managed to linger. I glanced back one final time, half expecting to see something behind me. But there was nothing, just the empty hallway and the echoes of my footsteps fading into the distance. 
With a sigh of relief, I stepped out into the cool evening air, leaving the oppressive silence and unsettling shadows of the school behind. As I walked home, I couldn't help but glance back over my shoulder every now and then, half expecting to see a figure standing in the window, watching me leave. Everyone had long gone home, and I was the last one left in the school. The silence was overwhelming, and the earlier crash still echoed in my mind. I glanced at the clock on the wall again, realizing how late it had become. The hands showed well past dusk, and the shadows outside had deepened into the inky blackness of night. With a sigh, I began to gather my things. I stuffed my history project into my backpack, carefully folding the papers and sliding my books into place. The stillness of the empty school was unsettling, and I found myself moving quickly, eager to leave the building behind. As I stepped into the hallway, the fluorescent lights flickered above me, casting eerie, shifting shadows. I walked briskly towards the exit, my footsteps echoing off the linoleum floor. The lockers on either side of the hall loomed like silent sentinels, their closed doors hiding who knew what secrets. Pushing open the heavy front door, I stepped outside and was greeted by the cool night air. The sky had turned a deep, velvety blue, and the first stars were twinkling above. The school grounds were deserted, and the familiar path through the trees that led to my house seemed much darker than usual. I glanced back at the school one last time, its windows dark and lifeless, before setting off towards the forest. During the day, this path was a pleasant shortcut, a route I had taken countless times. But tonight, the trees looked different, their branches twisting and turning in the faint light, casting strange, distorted shadows on the ground. I hesitated for a moment at the edge of the forest, taking a deep breath to steady my nerves. The rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl were the only sounds that reached my ears. I adjusted my backpack and started down the path, the familiar trail feeling foreign and ominous in the darkness. As I walked deeper into the forest, the canopy of leaves overhead blocked out most of the starlight and the path ahead became even darker. I quickened my pace, eager to reach the other side and the safety of the well-lit streets beyond. The sooner I got home, the better. The forest seemed to come alive around me as I pressed on. Each rustle of leaves underfoot sent a shiver down my spine, and every snap twig made me jump. Imagined shapes and shadows danced at the edge of my vision, fueled by the darkness and my own growing unease. Suddenly, a distant howl pierced the night, sending a chill through my bones. I froze in my tracks, heart racing. It was just a wolf, I told myself, though I had never heard one so close before. I continued walking, trying to shake off the sense of being watched that now clung to me like a cloak. The path twisted and turned, the trees closing in around me. The wind whispered through the branches, carrying with it an eerie, mournful sound. My footsteps echoed loudly in the silence, each one a reminder of how alone I was in the depths of the night. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of walking, I emerged from the forest onto the familiar street that led to my neighborhood. Streetlights cast a welcoming glow, banishing the shadows that had haunted me in the woods. Relief washed over me as I hurried towards the comforting lights of home. Behind me, the forest loomed dark and silent, its secrets hidden once more. I glanced back one last time, half expecting to see something lurking in the trees. But there was nothing just the stillness of the night and the distant echo of my footsteps fading away. With a sigh of relief, I quickened my pace, eager to leave the unsettling darkness of the night behind me. As soon as I stepped into the forest, an odd sense of unease settled over me like a heavy shroud. The dense canopy above blocked out the moonlight, leaving the path ahead barely visible. I walked slowly, each crunch of leaves underfoot sounding unnaturally loud in the still night. A shiver ran down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I stopped abruptly, my breath catching in my throat, and listened intently. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the distant rustling of leaves and the occasional hoot of an owl. I turned around, scanning the dark trees behind me, but saw nothing unusual. Get a grip, Andy, I muttered to myself, trying to shake off the paranoia. It's just your imagination but the feeling of being watched persisted, a prickling sensation on the back of my neck that refused to go away. 
I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing heart and forced myself to keep walking. The quicker I got through the forest, the sooner I would be home. The path twisted and turned, the trees pressing in on either side, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. I kept my eyes straight ahead, focusing on the small patches of moonlight that occasionally broke through the canopy. My footsteps seemed to echo in the silence, each step amplifying the sense of dread that was building inside me. Despite my best efforts to dismiss the feeling, I couldn't shake the thought that I wasn't alone. It was as if the shadows themselves were alive watching my every move. I quickened my pace, my pulse pounding in my ears, and tried to push the fear to the back of my mind. It's just the dark, I told myself again, my voice barely a whisper. There's nothing out here. But no matter how much I tried to convince myself, the unease only grew stronger. I could feel my skin prickling, my senses on high alert. Something was wrong, and I couldn't ignore it any longer. Determined to get home as quickly as possible, I picked up the pace, my footsteps echoing through the stillness of the forest. The feeling of being watched never left me, but I refused to look back again. All I could do was keep moving forward, hoping that whatever it was would leave me alone. The night seemed to stretch on endlessly as I hurried along the winding path. Every shadow, every rustle of leaves sent a fresh wave of apprehension through me. It felt as though unseen eyes were tracking my every move, waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves. Suddenly, a twig snapped loudly behind me, causing me to jump and spin around. My heart raced as I strained to see through the darkness. Was it just an animal or something more sinister? I stood frozen for what felt like an eternity, my senses on high alert. But the forest remained eerily quiet, as if holding its breath. With trembling hands, I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone, using its feeble light to scan the surrounding trees. Nothing moved. With a shaky exhale, I turned back to the path and resumed my hurried walk. Every nerve in my body screamed for me to run, but I knew panicking would only make things worse. I focused on the distant glow of streetlights ahead, my lifeline out of this unsettling darkness. As I finally emerged from the forest onto the well-lit street, relief flooded through me. The oppressive weight that had gripped my chest began to lift. I quickened my pace even more, not daring to look back until I reached the safety of my neighborhood. When I did glance over my shoulder, the forest stood silent and still, its secrets hidden once again. But the memory of that night would linger, a reminder of the primal fear that lurks in the depths of darkness and the unsettling sensation of being stalked by unseen forces in the night. I continued down the path, the shadows seeming to shift and move with each step I took. The further I walked, the more I felt like the forest was closing in around me. My footsteps echoed in the silence, a steady rhythm that kept me grounded. Then I heard it, footsteps behind me, soft but unmistakable. They were out of sync with my own, a faint crunching sound that sent a chill down my spine. I stopped abruptly, holding my breath. The footsteps stopped too. The silence was deafening. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen, every nerve in my body on edge. After a few seconds, I cautiously started walking again my ears tuned to the slightest sound. Almost immediately, the footsteps resumed, matching my pace. A wave of panic washed over me. I stopped again, and once more, the footsteps ceased. It was as if whoever, or whatever, was following me knew exactly what I was doing. My mind raced with possibilities, each one more terrifying than the last. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves, and began to walk again, this time faster. The footsteps quickened to match my pace, their rhythm just out of sync with mine. I could feel my heart beating faster, the fear building with each step. I stopped suddenly, hoping to catch whatever was off guard, but the footsteps stopped in perfect unison with mine. The forest was eerily silent again, the oppressive quiet only amplifying my growing terror. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. I began to walk again my pace even faster now, almost a jog. The footsteps behind me matched every step, a constant reminder that I wasn't alone. My heart raced, and my breathing grew shallow as the fear took hold. I fought the urge to break into a full run, knowing that if I did, whoever was behind me might do the same. 
Each step felt like a lifetime. The sound of the footsteps behind me driving me forward. The forest seemed darker, the trees more menacing. My mind was screaming at me to run, but I forced myself to keep walking, my eyes fixed on the path ahead. I didn't dare look back. The fear of what I might see kept me focused on moving forward, my muscles tense and ready to react at any moment. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of adrenaline through me. As I neared the edge of the forest, the footsteps suddenly stopped. The abrupt silence was almost worse than the sound of pursuit. I hesitated, my heart pounding in my chest, unsure whether to continue or turn around. Then, from the corner of my eye, I caught a movement, a fleeting shadow darting between the trees. Panic surged through me, and without thinking, I broke into a sprint, the forest blurring around me as I raced towards the safety of the streetlights ahead. Behind me, I heard a low guttural growl that froze my blood. Adrenaline surged through my veins, propelling me forward faster than I thought possible. I burst out of the forest onto the illuminated street, gasping for breath and trembling with fear. I didn't stop running until I reached the comforting glow of my neighborhood. Only then did I dare to look back. The forest stood silent and still, revealing nothing of the source of my terror. I stumbled home in a daze, my mind racing with what had just happened. Who or what had been following me, and why? The answers eluded me, lost in the darkness of the night and the haunting memory of those relentless footsteps. Fear gripped me like a vice, squeezing my chest until I could barely breathe. Without thinking, I broke into a run, my feet pounding the dirt path beneath me. I didn't dare look back. The footsteps behind me quickened, matching my frantic pace. They were closer now, their rhythm a terrifying echo of my own. The forest around me became a blur of dark shapes and shadows. Branches reached out like skeletal hands, snagging at my clothes and scratching my skin. The darkness was suffocating, the thick canopy above blocking out any trace of moonlight. My heart hammered in my chest, each beat louder than the last. I pushed myself to run faster, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The footsteps behind me never faltered, always just a few paces behind. The sound filled my ears, drowning out everything else. I couldn't tell where they were coming from, left, right, directly behind me. All I knew was that they were closing in. Panic surged through me, fueling my flight. The path twisted and turned, and I followed it blindly driven by pure instinct. The fear was all-consuming, a primal urge to escape whatever was pursuing me. My mind raced with images of unseen horrors, and every shadow seemed to hide a threat. The forest was a maze of darkness and noise. I stumbled over roots and rocks, my feet barely touching the ground before I pushed off again. The footsteps behind me seemed to grow louder, closer, and I could almost feel the presence of my pursuer breathing down my neck. I could hear my own panicked breath, feel the burn in my lungs, but I didn't dare slow down. The fear was too great, the need to escape too overpowering. I had to get out of the forest, had to reach the safety of the open street. The thought of the edge of the forest, where the lights of the town would be visible, was the only thing that kept me going. Branches whipped against my face, tears streaming from my eyes, but I didn't stop. I couldn't. The footsteps behind me were relentless, a constant reminder that I was being hunted. The dark forest seemed endless, and my hope began to wane, but I couldn't give in to the fear. I had to keep running, had to reach the edge of the forest. It was my only chance. I pushed myself harder, faster, driven by the terror that coursed through me. The footsteps followed, never letting up, as I raced through the night. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of sprinting through the oppressive darkness, I burst out of the trees and onto the edge of town. The street lights illuminated the familiar road ahead, casting long shadows that seemed friendly compared to the malevolent darkness of the forest. Gasping for breath, I stumbled forward, my legs trembling with exhaustion. I dared to glance back, half expecting to see my pursuer emerging from the forest. But there was nothing. Just the quiet night air, thick with the lingering echoes of my frantic flight. Relief flooded through me, washing away the terror that had gripped me moments before. 
I collapsed onto the sidewalk, my chest heaving, tears of relief mixing with sweat and dirt on my face. I was safe, for now. As I lay there, the distant sound of footsteps still echoed in my ears, haunting me even in the safety of the town. I knew I would never forget the terror of that night, the relentless pursuit through the dark heart of the forest. But for now, I was alive, and that was enough. Suddenly, amidst the chaos of my sprint through the forest, I heard someone calling my name. Andy, wait! The voice was quiet yet distinct, cutting through the darkness and the pounding of my own footsteps. My heart lurched in my chest as I skidded to a stop, my breath catching in my throat. I spun around, eyes wide, scanning the shadows and the trees around me. But there was no one there, just the rustling leaves and the eerie silence of the night. Fear gripped me like a vice, squeezing tighter with each passing second. Who was calling my name? Why couldn't I see them? My mind raced, trying to make sense of what was happening. Was it the same person who had been following me? Or was it something else, something worse? The uncertainty only fueled my panic. Without hesitating, I turned and ran even faster than before. The voice had unnerved me beyond reason. I didn't know who or what was out there, but I knew I had to get away. Every muscle in my body screamed with exertion as I pushed myself harder, my feet pounding the forest floor relentlessly. The voice called again, closer this time, and I felt a surge of pure terror. I couldn't stop, I couldn't look back. All I could do was run, run as if my life depended on it. The path ahead seemed endless, the trees blurring into a frenzied dance of shadows. Leave me alone! I screamed into the darkness, my voice choked with fear and desperation. But the voice persisted, calling my name over and over like a haunting echo. It knew my name, it knew where I was. Tears streamed down my face, mixing with sweat and dirt. The forest around me seemed to close in, the trees looming like giants, their branches reaching out to grab at me. I stumbled and fell, scraping my hands on the rough ground, but I scrambled back to my feet and kept running. My breath came in ragged gasps, my heart threatening to burst from my chest. The adrenaline fueled me, pushing me forward despite the burning ache in my muscles. The edge of the forest was a distant promise, the faint glow of streetlights beckoning me like a lifeline. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I burst out of the forest into the open. The streetlights ahead provided a faint glimmer of hope, a beacon in the darkness. I ran faster than I ever thought possible, my legs burning with exhaustion. Every ounce of strength left in me was dedicated to reaching the safety of the illuminated street. As I emerged onto the familiar road, I didn't dare slow down. The voice had faded behind me, lost in the echo of my frantic escape. I stumbled forward, gasping for air, my body trembling with adrenaline and fear. Only when I reached the welcoming glow of the streetlights did I allow myself to collapse onto the pavement, my chest heaving, tears of relief streaming down my face. I lay there, shaken to my core, unable to comprehend the surreal terror I had just experienced. Eventually, the sounds of the night settled around me, the distant hum of traffic, the rustling of leaves in the breeze. I closed my eyes, trying to calm my racing heart, knowing that the memory of that voice calling my name would haunt my dreams for nights to come. Reaching the edge of the forest, I finally came to a halt, my chest heaving with each ragged breath. The adrenaline that had propelled me through the dark woods now began to ebb, leaving behind a shaky, hollow feeling in my limbs. I turned around slowly, scanning the tree line behind me. The forest stood silent and still, its shadows deep and impenetrable. There was no sign of the footsteps that had pursued me or the voice that had called my name. It was as if they had vanished into thin air, leaving me alone in the unsettling calm of the night. My heart continued to race, its frantic beats echoing in my ears. I struggled to catch my breath, my hands trembling at my sides. The street lights ahead cast long, stark shadows across the pavement, their glow offering a faint sense of security. I dared not linger at the edge of the forest any longer than necessary. Every rustle of leaves, every whisper of wind, sent a jolt of fear through me. I felt exposed, vulnerable, 
as if at any moment something unseen could emerge from the darkness. With a final glance over my shoulder, I turned away from the forest and stumbled forward, away from the edge. The path ahead was clear, illuminated by the distant glow of the streetlights. I walked briskly, my senses still on high alert, my mind racing with unanswered questions. What had been following me? Who had called my name in the darkness? The uncertainty gnawed at me, but I pushed it aside, focusing instead on putting as much distance between myself and the forest as possible. As I reached the well-lit streets, a sense of relief washed over me. The familiar sights and sounds of the town reassured me that I was safe, at least for now. I continued walking, my footsteps echoing in the quiet night, until I finally reached the comfort of my own home. Inside, I locked the door behind me and leaned against it, my heart still pounding in my chest. I took slow, deep breaths, trying to calm the lingering fear that gripped me. The events of the night replayed in my mind, each detail etched vividly despite the passage of time. I peeled off my sweat-drenched clothes and sank onto the couch, the cool fabric a welcome relief against my clammy skin. I glanced at the clock. It was well past midnight. The house was silent except for the soft hum of the refrigerator and the ticking of the clock on the wall. Unable to shake off the adrenaline-fueled tension, I poured myself a glass of water and sipped it slowly savoring the simple act of grounding myself in reality. The distant memory of the voice calling my name lingered, haunting me like a ghost. After what felt like an eternity, exhaustion finally caught up with me. I dragged myself to bed, but sleep was elusive. Every creak of the house, every whisper of wind outside made me jump, my nerves still raw from the night's ordeal. As dawn broke, casting a pale light through my window, I finally drifted into a fitful sleep. Dreams of shadowy figures and echoing footsteps chased me through the night, a reminder that the darkness held secrets I could not yet unravel. When I awoke, sunlight streamed through the curtains, bathing the room in warmth. The events of the previous night felt surreal, almost like a distant nightmare. But as I glanced out the window at the edge of the forest, a shiver ran down my spine. The forest stood silent and indifferent, its secrets hidden within the labyrinth of trees, I knew I couldn't erase the memory of what had happened, but I also knew I had survived. And as the day stretched out before me, I vowed to find answers, to uncover the truth behind the voice in the dark. I made it home and quickly locked the door behind me, leaning against it for a moment to catch my breath. My parents weren't back yet, leaving me alone in the quiet house. I stood there in the hallway, the silence pressing in around me trying to convince myself that it had all been a figment of my imagination. I dropped my backpack on the floor and sank down onto the couch in the living room. My hands still trembled slightly as I rubbed them together, trying to dispel the lingering fear. The events of the night replayed in my mind like a haunting movie, each scene vivid and unsettling. It was just my imagination, I muttered aloud, hoping that hearing the words would make them true. There's no way someone could have been following me. It was probably just an animal or the wind. But deep down, I knew it wasn't just my imagination. The footsteps, the voice calling my name, they had felt too real, too deliberate. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had been in real danger out there in the forest. I glanced at the clock on the wall. It was late and my parents wouldn't be home for at least another hour. I considered calling a friend, maybe telling them what had happened, but a sudden reluctance held me back. What would they think? Would they believe me, or would they dismiss it as a childish prank or overactive imagination? Instead, I grabbed my phone and distracted myself with mindless scrolling through social media, trying to push the unsettling thoughts to the back of my mind. The glow of the screen offered a small comfort in the darkness of the living room. Time passed slowly, each minute feeling like an eternity. Eventually, I heard the familiar sound of the front door opening and my parents came in, their voices echoing through the hallway. I hurried to greet them, putting on a brave face and pretending that everything was normal. Hey Andy, how was your day? My mom asked with a warm smile. Uh, it was okay, I replied, trying to sound casual, just working on that history project. They didn't need to know about the terror I had experienced in the forest. Not yet, anyway. I followed them into the kitchen as they unpacked groceries, 
the mundane tasks of daily life providing a welcome distraction. As the evening wore on and I finally retreated to my room, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The memory of the forest and the mysterious voice lingered, refusing to be ignored. I lay in bed staring up at the ceiling, my mind racing with questions that had no answers. It was just my imagination, I repeated to myself, but the words rang hollow in the silence of my room. Deep down, I knew that something had happened out there in the forest, something that I couldn't explain away. The hours ticked by slowly, and eventually, exhaustion overwhelmed me. I drifted into a fitful sleep, haunted by dreams of shadowy figures and echoing footsteps. The morning sunlight filtered through my window, casting a pale glow across my room. When I woke up, the events of the previous night felt surreal, almost like a distant memory. But as I sat up in bed, the sense of unease returned, gnawing at my thoughts. I knew I couldn't ignore what had happened any longer. Gathering my courage, I decided to confide in my parents. I found them in the kitchen, sipping their morning coffee. Taking a deep breath, I began to recount the events of the night before, the footsteps, the voice, the overwhelming fear. To my surprise, my parents listened attentively, their expressions gradually shifting from curiosity to concern. When I finished, there was a long pause. Andy, my dad finally said gently, are you sure it wasn't just your imagination? I hesitated, searching for the right words. I, I don't think so. It felt too real, Dad. I was terrified. My mom reached out and squeezed my hand. We believe you, sweetheart. Whatever happened, we're here for you. Relief flooded through me, knowing that I wasn't facing this alone. Together, we discussed what to do next, whether to report it to the authorities or to seek out more information about the history of the forest. My parents promised to help me figure it out, to find answers and ensure my safety. As we talked, the weight of fear began to lift from my shoulders. I realized that confronting the truth, no matter how unsettling, was the first step toward finding peace of mind. The next day, as I walked to school, my nerves still on edge from the events of the previous night, I saw him. It was the same man from the forest, tall and imposing in a dark coat, standing at the street corner. Our eyes locked and a chill ran down my spine as he smiled at me. I froze in my tracks, my heart skipping a beat. Fear surged through me like a tidal wave, threatening to overwhelm my senses. Every instinct screamed at me to run, to get as far away from him as possible, but I couldn't move. I was rooted to the spot, trapped in the grip of terror. The man's smile widened slightly, as if he could sense my fear as if he relished it. He made no move towards me, just stood there watching. The world around us seemed to fade away, leaving only the two of us locked in a silent, tense standoff. Seconds stretched into eternity as we stood there, neither of us moving. I couldn't tear my gaze away from him, couldn't break free from his unnerving stare. It was as if he held some strange power over me, a power that I couldn't understand. Finally, with an effort of will, I managed to turn and continue walking, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't dare look back, didn't want to see if he was following me. The sound of my own footsteps echoed loudly in my ears, each step a reminder of the encounter. As I reached the safety of the school grounds, I dared to glance over my shoulder. The man was gone, vanished as mysteriously as he had appeared. Relief flooded through me, but it was tinged with lingering unease. Throughout the day, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every shadow, every unfamiliar face seemed to hide a potential threat. I jumped at every sound, my nerves raw with paranoia. I wanted to tell someone, to confide in a friend or a teacher, but fear held me back. What would they think? Would they believe me? The memory of the man's smile haunted me, a silent reminder of the danger that lurked just out of sight. As the final bell rang and I made my way home, I kept my eyes peeled, scanning the streets for any sign of him. But the man in the dark coat remained elusive, a ghostly presence that lingered in the corners of my mind. That night, as I lay in bed, sleep eluded me. The image of the man's smile burned into my consciousness, his eyes boring into mine. I tossed and turned, my thoughts consumed by fear and uncertainty. 
I knew that whatever had happened in the forest and on the street corner was not over. The man had found me once, and I feared he would find me again. Every rustle of leaves outside my window, every creak of the house settling sent my heart racing. The following morning, I decided I couldn't keep this to myself any longer. I needed to confide in someone, to seek help and advice. With a determined resolve, I approached Miss Thompson, my favorite teacher during lunch break. She listened attentively as I recounted the events of the previous night and the unsettling encounter on the street corner. Concern furrowed her brow as I spoke, and when I finished, she reached out and gently squeezed my hand. Andy, thank you for sharing this with me, she said softly. I believe you. Let's figure out what to do next. Your safety is our priority. Relief washed over me, knowing that I finally had someone on my side. Miss Thompson promised to talk to the school counselor and together we would come up with a plan to ensure my safety and investigate what had happened. Throughout the day, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It was a small comfort, but it was a start. I still couldn't shake the unease completely, but knowing that I had support gave me a renewed sense of courage. That evening, as I walked home with a friend, I kept a watchful eye on my surroundings. The streets seemed quieter than usual, the shadows longer and more ominous. But with each step, I felt a little stronger, a little more determined to face whatever lay ahead. As we reached my doorstep, I turned to my friend and offered a grateful smile. Thanks for walking with me, I said, the words carrying more meaning than I could express. Anytime, Andy, my friend replied with a reassuring smile. We've got your back. And for the first time since that terrifying night in the forest, I allowed myself to believe that maybe, just maybe, I could find a way to put this ordeal behind me. Meeting up with my best friend Mike, I desperately wanted to tell him everything, but fear held me back. What if he didn't believe me? What if he thought I was losing my mind? Instead of pouring out my fears and recounting the terrifying events, I settled for a vague dismissal. Nothing special happened yesterday, I said, forcing a casual tone while inside turmoil raged like a storm. Mike raised an eyebrow, his expression curious. You sure? You seem off. Yeah, just tired from staying up late, I replied, trying to brush off his concern. But I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. My thoughts were consumed by the mysterious man in the dark coat, the footsteps in the forest, the voice that called my name. They haunted me, whispering in the back of my mind. Mike must have sensed something was wrong, but he didn't press further. We talked about mundane things, school, sports, plans for the weekend, but my mind kept drifting back to the events I couldn't explain. As we parted ways later, I felt a pang of guilt for keeping my friend in the dark, but the fear of disbelief, of being dismissed as imagining things, kept me silent. That night, alone in my room, I replayed the encounters over and over. The fear that had gripped me in the forest, the chilling smile on the man's face, the inexplicable presence on the street corner. They all seemed like scenes from a nightmare. I wanted desperately to confide in someone, to share the weight of my fear, but the fear of being misunderstood, of being seen as paranoid or delusional kept me silent. So I lay awake, wrestling with my thoughts, unable to find peace. The secret I carried weighed heavy on my heart, a burden I couldn't shake off. And as the night stretched on, I wondered if I would ever find the courage to face the truth, or if the truth would find me first. The voice that had called my name in the darkness would linger in my nightmares, a reminder of how fragile our sense of security truly is. Each passing day only intensified my apprehension, and I began to notice things, subtle glances from strangers, fleeting shadows that seemed to follow me. Days turned into weeks, and I withdrew further into myself, Mike continued to be supportive, unaware of the turmoil churning inside me. He'd invite me out, try to cheer me up with jokes and distractions, but I found it increasingly difficult to pretend everything was normal. One evening, unable to contain my anxiety any longer, I found myself on the verge of confiding in Mike. We were sitting on a bench at the park, the sun setting in a blaze of colors that normally would have lifted my spirits. But today, even the beauty of nature couldn't soothe my troubled mind. Mike, I started hesitantly. There's something I need to tell you. He turned to me, 
concern etched on his face. What is it, Andy? I took a deep breath, trying to find the right words. I... I haven't been entirely honest with you about what happened that night in the forest. Mike's brow furrowed, his eyes searching mine. What do you mean? I hesitated, unsure of how to explain without sounding completely irrational. But as I looked into Mike's eyes, I saw understanding and unwavering support. Taking another deep breath, I began to recount everything. The footsteps, the voice, the encounter on the street corner. To my surprise, Mike listened attentively, his expression shifting from concern to a quiet determination. When I finished, there was a moment of silence between us. Andy, he said finally, his voice calm yet resolute. Whatever happened to you, I believe you. We'll figure this out together. Relief flooded through me, tears welling up in my eyes. For the first time since that night, I felt a glimmer of hope that I wasn't alone in this. Mike's acceptance and support gave me the strength to confront my fears, to seek answers instead of hiding from them. As we sat there in the fading light of the sunset, I knew that no matter what lay ahead, I had a friend by my side who would stand with me through it all. And with that realization, the weight of the secret I had carried for so long began to lift, replaced by a newfound sense of courage and determination.